Man Visible and Invisible by C.W. Leadbeater Chapter 7 The Animal Group Soul The idea of the group soul seems to many students novel and difficult. Perhaps an oriental simile may help us to understand it more readily. They tell us that the group soul is like the water in a bucket. While if we suppose a tumberful of water withdrawn from that bucket, we shall have a representation of the soul of a single animal. The water in the glass is for the time quite separate from that in the bucket, and it takes the form of the glass which contains it. Suppose that we put into that glass a certain amount of coloring matter so that the water in it acquires a distinctive hue of its own. That coloring matter will represent the qualities developed in the temporally separated soul by the various experiences through which it passes. The death of an animal will be typified by pouring back the water from the glass into the bucket, when the coloring matter will at once spread throughout the whole bucket, tinting it faintly. In exactly the same way, whatever qualities have been developed during the life of the separated animal will be distributed through the whole soul group, group soul, sorry, after his death. It would be impossible to take out again out of the bucket the same glass of water, but every glass full taken out afterwards will necessarily be colored by the matter brought in from that first glass. If it were possible to take out the bucket exactly, the same molecules of the water to reproduce the first glass full exactly. That would be a veritable reincarnation. But since that is not possible, we have instead to re mm, we have instead the reabsorption of the temporary soul into the group soul, a process in which, nevertheless, everything that has been gained by the temporary separation is carefully preserved. Not one glass at a time only, but many glasses simultaneously are filled from each bucket and each one brings them back back to the group soul in its own quota of evolved quality. Thus in time many different qualities are developed within each group soul and of course manifest themselves as inherent in every animal which is an expression of it. Hence come the definite instincts with which certain creatures are born. The duckling, the moment it is set free from the egg, seeks the water and can swim fearlessly, even though it may have been hatched by a hen which dreads water and is terribly worried to find her charges rushing to what she supposes to be destruction. But that fragment of a group soul which is functioning through the duckling knows perfectly well from previous experience that the water is its natural element and the tiny body fearlessly carries out its behests. All the while, within each soul group, the tendency to further and further subdivision is steadily working. It manifests itself in a phenomenon which, though upon a higher plane, has a curious resemblance to the way in which a cell divides. In the group soul, which may be thought of as vividly animating a great mass of matter on the mental plane, a kind of scarcely perceptible film appears as it might suppose no as we might suppose a sort of barrier gradually to form itself against the bucket the water at first filters through this barrier to some extent but nevertheless the wa the glasses of water taken out of one side of the barrier are always returned to the same side so that by degrees the water on one side becomes differentiated from the water on the other and then the barrier gradually densifies and becomes impenetrable so that we have eventually two buckets instead of one. This process is constantly repeated until by the time we reach the really higher animals, a comparatively small number of bodies is attached to each soul group. It is found that within individuation, which lifts an entity definitely from the animal kingdom into the human, can take place only from certain types of animals only among domesticated animals and by no means among all classes of even those does this individuation occur. It must of course be remembered that we are very little more than halfway through the evolution of this chain of worlds 
and it is only at the end of this evolution that the animal kingdom is expected to attain humanity. Naturally, therefore, any animal which is now attaining or even approaching individuation must be a very must be very remarkably in that advanced of the others. And the number of such cases is consequently very small. Still, they do occasionally occur, and they are of extreme interest to us, as indicating the manner in which we ourselves came into existence in the remote past. The lunar animal kingdom out of which we were individualized was at a somewhat lower level than the animal kingdom of the present day. But the principle adopted seems to have been almost precisely the same.